Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video I want to take you through the stacking software known as Sequator or Sequator. It's an astrophotography image stacking program that is just really easy to use and it works really well pretty well all the time and that's pretty rare in the astrophotography software world so you use it to stack your individual sub exposure images of the night sky and it will align the stars and register them together and improve the signal to noise ratio by the power of stacking and create these noise free images so if you've shot your nightscape image that includes the foreground and the night sky you can separate the two so it doesn't make that blurry foreground you can stack your deep sky images of nebulae and galaxies is just a really great software that I only really started using about a year ago and that was a mistake because it is really powerful and it's so easy to use. I just love it. I'm going to take you through the tutorial now and let's get to it. This is the user interface on Sequator. Not much to look at. You have the image will appear on the right and then the settings on the left. The images that we're going to be stacking here, they're just simple stationary tripod shots of the Milky Way taken this summer uh, using a Canon 6D Mark II stock camera and a Rokinon 14mm f2.8 lens. So nothing special and they are quite noisy when you zoom into them. Uh, the stars are trailing and everything but you can actually create a very respectable image by taking multiple exposures like this and stacking them in sequator. So this is the image here and there's you know there's airplanes flying by and there's hot pixels and all sorts of fun stuff. So this is where Sequator really comes in handy. So I'll just close bridge down here and I'm going to open my star images. So up on the top left you can see star images. These are our light frames or our individual exposures. You just double click that and navigate to wherever you keep those. In my case we're going to do 369. So we're going to have 12 images and uh, they're going to load up on the screen here. And it's just going to show us our base image. So you can change your base image. By default, it looks like it just chooses one right in the middle of the pack. Uh, but I can choose, let's say, 3309 specifically. Let's see what that base image. The only thing to really keep in mind here is if something really weird happened, a big airplane or satellite flew by, I wouldn't use that as the base image. But normally, just the default one it takes is fine. Noise images, these are dark frames. So if you've taken those type of calibration frames, you can use those here. Uh, they're not necessary in my, in my experience. Uh, using Sequator is done just fine without dark frames. The vignetting images are flat frames. You don't necessarily need those either, uh, but they can help if you're willing to put in the effort. So next is our output. You can see it's still a red light. We need to turn that green. We'll double click on output and just name the file our stack. That's going to spit out our 16-bit TIFF file of our stack.tiff of the final file here. So you just have to name that output file. Here's where it gets interesting in the stacking settings here. So in the composition, we've got align stars and that's the default. You can also create star trail images, in which case you'd want to select trails. Uh, for this tutorial, we want to align stars and then this is really important, freeze ground. So anytime the sky is moving and the ground isn't or vice versa, if you're using a star tracker, uh, they're going to be moving independently from each other and that's when you get those really blurry foregrounds with a stacked sky and all that other stuff. So if you're using Deep Sky Stacker for instance and you stack these images together you get that really blurry foreground that you'd have to deal with later. So we're going to use this very powerful feature freeze ground and have selective that's what the box is, selective, remove aircrafts, meteors, and other unstable objects. So it will use Sigma clipping to get rid of that airplane that flew by and any other weird stuff like that. So freeze ground selective, align stars. The sky region, so this gives you a few options for telling Sequator which portion of the image is the sky. My favorite is the irregular mask mode, but just to show you, boundary line is what you would use if you had a nice flat horizon. Typically won't have this in a nightscape style image. Gradient gives you a little more control, setting, controlling that mask for separating the sky and the ground. And then irregular mask, the most useful, it gives you this little brush that you can control the size of by using your mouse wheel. And you just paint in the area that you want to tell it to align the stars with. So I'm going right through the core of the Milky Way here and I can see Delphinus and some of the other star 
formations in this area and we're just going to really create literally an irregular mask. If you need to remove from, from the selection because you hit a tree or something, you just right mouse clip and erase that. There we go. And so we've got our irregular mask. Auto brightness, we're going to leave that turned off. Um, doesn't really do anything for me uh, in my experience. High dynamic range, same thing. We're going to really play with this image after the fact. So we really just need Sequator to successfully stack the data. I'm going to leave those off. I will use remove dynamic noises though. That one I find to be handy for removing hot pixels and, and weird stuff like that. So we're going to turn that one on. We're going to leave reduce distortion effects on auto. And I believe by default it was on Tele, which I'm not sure what that means, but I prefer the complex. Very experimental with this. You can go ahead and run, it, run through uh, one tweak on the settings over again just to see and inspect the results. And the great thing about Sequator is that it operates very quickly. So it's only going to be about 20 seconds to do the stack, which makes it much easier to tweak settings and try something new, which is really great. Reduce light pollution, I'm gonna leave that off even though we do have a little bit of light pollution. Enhance starlight. Um, that in my experience doesn't really do a whole lot. You would think that it would, you know, make the brightest stars a little brighter for some constellations and stuff, but in my experience it doesn't really do much at all. The merge four pixels is cool because um, it's gonna reduce the size of the image by a quarter, but it's gonna increase that signal by merging the four pixels around one. Uh, so if you're willing to give up that overall size and resolution, it might be worth trying that merge four pixels option. We're gonna leave it off for now. Time lapse off, of course, in the color space, the default sRGB. So let me just make sure I've got everything in the way I want it here, the sky region with my irregular mask. The composition is to align stars, freeze the ground in a selective manner, and we're gonna do some, uh, remove the dynamic noises and the distortion effects, which isn't really gonna do a whole lot in this case, but we'll leave it on. And then you simply just need to hit start. It's gonna run through the process here, and uh, if you're no stranger to uh, Deep Sky Stacker and some of those other stacking software, uh, you know that that can take a really long time. That is not the case with Sequator. It's gonna run through this very quickly. So just over one minute in total, and that's probably the longest it's ever went. I wonder if there's just something it didn't like about these frames. But so one minute to stack all that, we're gonna close it, and it's gonna open our completed image here, which even from here, I can tell is so much better than that single image. Just a lot smoother, uh, and something we can really, you know, tease the data out in the color in post-processing. So, I'll open up that image in Adobe Photoshop here. I have it set as layers with my single exposure, the stacked exposure, and then a slightly processed version, just so you can see the difference here. So on this layer, we have our single exposure, and you can see the noise and star trailing, which we can't do much about. This is a stationary shot for 30 seconds. Uh, but if I turn the next layer on, this is the stacked version. Now, if we look up close at the difference between the single exposure here and the stacked, look at how much smoother and how much how quality that data is. We can now play with that using curves, levels, saturation, whatever we want, and you're gonna get a much better image. That's the signal to noise ratio at work. We have a longer overall integrated exposure time on this image over just a single 30 second sub. So now that you've seen that, just this is me playing with curves real quick doing a very haphazard job at processing it out just to see what's in there. Uh, the difference there, probably over the top with the colors as usual. Um, but that's the difference you can make to these single exposure images just on a tripod of a nightscape. Those, the trees and everything have not moved. It managed to stack both successfully, uh, which is quite amazing for a free software tool. Here's where it gets really awesome. So I said to myself, well, if Sequator does such an amazing job, it's so easy to use for my nightscape images, why not use it on a full-on deep sky image as well? So I shot the North America Nebula region with my Rokinon 135 millimeter F2 lens on a star tracker, the Skywatcher Star Adventure. This is a single exposure if we zoom out here. You can see it in there, it's great. I believe it was maybe, I think I did 90 seconds at say ISO 1600 or 3200. Quite noisy, 
Uh, if we look in there, we, we've got some potential in there, but it's just a noisy exposure. Look at the difference in the stacked file that Sequator spit out. It is beautifully smooth. We have the natural star colors, which is more to do with the, the conditions and the lens used, but that really smooth data that we can do so much more with. Uh, so, and that now here's me playing with the curves a little more on this data. And like, there's some great data in here. And, and it's, if you look up close from a single image to the stacked, to the curves, my goodness, the power of the signal to noise ratio at work in a very simple method. No dark frames, no flat frames, nothing like that. Just the act of stacking images. Uh, I used to do it in these scenarios manually in Photoshop and just layer the, step it down in the opacity to kind of capitalize on the power of the signal to noise ratio, but Sequator does an even better job. Really reliable results for your nightscape images, for your deep sky images. It's free, it's still available, it still seems to be being updated. So um, I think it's just a great overall tool and I can't thank the author enough for making it free and available to everybody. So hopefully you explore Sequator a little more, Sequator, whatever you wanna call it, but I think it's a great tool. So hopefully you found this useful and until next time, clear skies.